In this video, I'm going to show you why mixing cardio and weights are good for you. Separately, endurance training cardio and strength training weights boost a person's fitness and health. However, new research emerged showing that the combination of these two may even be more beneficial for anyone. Beneficial in the sense that it will help with disease and injury prevention. But first, how is cardio training different from weight training? What exercises fall under each category? Keep watching until the end to know what are the ultimate guidelines to get the best results when doing cardio and weights together. Cardio versus Weight Training Cardiovascular activity is any movement that accelerates your heart rate and keeps it elevated continuously for the duration of the workout. Others refer to cardio as aerobics because this type of activity involves the use of oxygen to convert glucose into fuel. Weight training, more commonly known as strength or resistance training, aims to build muscle and grow strength. It entails moving your body against a force or resistance. In this case, resistance may refer to tools like dumbbells, barbells, kettlebells, or resistance bands. Alternatively, simply moving your body against gravity is also considered strength training, more specifically known as body weight training. What exercises count as cardio or weights? Exercises like the deadlift, triceps pushdown, and biceps arm curl are good examples of strength training. Similarly, Pilates, yoga, and bar are other forms of weight training through the use of one's body weight. On the other hand, cycling, running, swimming, and boxing are generally categorized as cardio exercises. The primary goal of cardio is to feel an increase in breathing and heart rate, while with strength workouts, it is to feel muscle fatigue. Moving on, let's get right into the main question of this video, and that is, why are cardio and weights better together than alone? Real quick, hit that like button and let's get back into it. First study. A screening trial around various types of cancer, including prostate, lung, colorectal, and overall cancer started in 1993. In that trial, there were more than 150,000 men and women participants, ranging from ages 55 to 74 and information was gathered from 10 different cancer centers across the United States. In 2006, a survey was conducted on some of the participants' exercise habits in weightlifting and aerobic exercise. Almost 100,000 completed the survey and were followed up through 2016. According to researchers, it was found that while any amount of exercise caused noticeable improvement in overall health, participants whose weekly exercise regimens combined cardio with one to two days of strength workouts were 41% less likely to die during the trial from any cause, except cancer, compared to those who did not exercise at all. Participants who only did aerobic activity reduced their risk by 32%, and those who did weightlifting alone reduced their risk by 9%. Second study. The second study published in the BJSM showed similar results. For this study, the data came from more than 416,000 American adults who were included in the National Health Interview Survey between 1997 and 2014. Through the National Death Index, researchers tracked how many people had died during that window of time. The conclusion was that just a small amount of exercise made a considerable difference. Compared to people who didn't exercise at all, those who exercised for just one hour per week had a substantial reduction in mortality risk. What's more, the benefits increased until around three hours of weekly exercise, then slowed down. In other words, exercising for more than three hours a week only had a much smaller added benefit. However, exercising at least three hours a week had a substantial benefit. Overall, getting around three hours of cardio and weight training twice a week reduced all-cause mortality by 30%, regardless of the participant's age or gender. See, there's enough evidence that points to the more significant benefit of doing cardio and strength training together. For a more in-depth understanding of the power of these two exercises when paired, keep watching. Combining cardio and weights helps prevent disease. For both studies, researchers used a benchmark called all-cause mortality to determine how effective the two different types of exercise were in improving longevity. In essence, it examines a person's risk of dying during the study time frame, giving researchers a good idea of how an intervention can help improve and prolong a person's life. Of course, immortality is out of the question. What humans can do, however, is to delay death caused by common diseases like cancer and heart disease. This is why a study that shows reduced all-cause mortality is greatly valuable, since very few interventions can be done that have an actual impact on the reduction of all-cause mortality. When it comes to the protective benefits of combined cardio and weights, researchers aren't entirely sure how the two can help stave off disease. But according to an outside researcher, the activities are a very good start. 
Undoubtedly, cardiovascular activity is good for weight loss and is a tremendously effective tool for treating several conditions, such as diabetes, high blood pressure, joint disease, high cholesterol, liver disease, sleep apnea, and acid reflux. Aerobics increase blood flow, thus increasing the amount of oxygen in the body. This translates downstream to improvements in insulin resistance and LDL bad cholesterol, both of which affect how much visceral fat, the dangerous kind a person has. High amounts of visceral fat lead to loads of common health conditions, including heart and liver disease. On the contrary, weight training builds muscle. Did you know that 80% of glucose clearance is interceded by the muscles? As such, the things that improve muscle also improve glucose processing and blood sugar. Therefore, improved glucose metabolism lowers a person's risk for insulin resistance, heart disease, and type 2 diabetes. Needless to say, the benefits of weight training are clear as day. After all, everyone knows for a fact that people who have more muscle mass and less fat are likely to die early due to health reasons. In addition to the benefit of improved long-term health, incorporating both strength and cardio into your workout routine can reduce your chances of getting injured. Cardio plus weights help prevent injury. The science behind this is really simple. Mixing two types of workouts allows your body to have a break from repetitive movements. In this case, cardio moves like running and cycling are all repetitive. And so, when alternating between cardio to resistance exercises, your body can take a brief rest while you strengthen and stabilize your muscles. For instance, Mark goes on four days of running and two days of weight training. Meanwhile, Albert spends six days a week only running without weight training. In this scenario, Mark has a lower risk of injury than Albert. A suggestion made by the American College of Sports Medicine ACSM, is to have a balance of two-thirds cardio workouts to one-third weight training. But your ratio doesn't have to be that accurate. What matters most is that you have a blend of exercises and that you're doing something you enjoy. In my case, I love lifting but hate running, so I do what I love and lift more. Likewise, I also make sure to mix in a couple of sessions of cardio training. After all, cardio builds endurance and endurance plays an important role in your ability to lift. Studies show that strength training does not cancel out the gains of endurance training when done on the same day. Similarly, cardio won't cancel out the growth of muscles from weight training when done on the same day. Things like HIIT workouts are a great way to do endurance and strength workouts together. Ways to combine endurance and strength training. Number 1. Do High Intensity Interval Training or HIIT HIIT is the most efficient way to burn fat and calories and develop aerobic capacity. For instance, when you do a 10-minute HIIT, you burn as many calories as you would in a 30-minute treadmill run. Another study by the ACSM found that performing just two weeks of HIIT translates to six to eight weeks of endurance training. That's because HIIT combines short bouts of super intense exercise moves with recovery intervals. An example of an interval cycle can include 60 seconds of mountain climbers, followed by 60 seconds each of squats, deadlifts, handstand push-ups, and planks. Repeat this cycle 4-6 to six times or follow up with different 1-4 to four combinations. The next method is one of my favorites which is to Number 2. End your weight training session with 5-10 to 10 minute cardio sprints If you're a weight training junkie like me, then your best bet for incorporating cardio is to do cardio sprints after your workout. This is a good option for us who aren't into cardio because of the tedious movements and for some reason don't normally get our heart rate up through aerobic exercise. One way of doing cardio sprints is the fartlek workout, meaning speed play in Swedish. It involves mixing fast-paced intervals with recovery intervals at your desired distance and pace. During the recovery intervals, however, consider going slow enough to recover your breath to the point you can breathe deeply again before starting another sprint interval. On the flip side, if you're a cardio junkie looking to incorporate strength training, number 3. Train each major muscle group once per week Make sure to train every muscle group – core, legs, back, etc. – once per week. Doing so will maintain your physical balance. It will also reduce your risk of injury by not overtraining. Muscles need between 48 to 72 hours to fully recover and grow from weight training. Without that rest, training muscles too frequently will lead to a decrease in muscle tissue and or loss of strength. For instance, do a 30-minute leg workout 5 days per week. Another way is to engage in a longer full-body workout 2 days per week. Either way, you can perform the strength training alone or before your cardio session that day. If you ask experts, most of them will say that strength training is best done before cardio to ensure you have enough energy to perform the exercises with proper form. If you've reached this part of the video, then good for you because there's something I'd like to share with you. From here on, the four guidelines that I always follow to get the most out of my workouts. Tips to get the best results Number 1. Always take a breather 
Never forego resting, especially on the days after vigorous workouts. It is during the recovery phase that the actual growth and strength development of muscles occur. Number two, perform exercises you enjoy. You're more likely to get to the end of your workout if you're enjoying the activities you're doing. If you're not a fitness person, take some time to do different types of activities in different settings. Number three, fuel your body well. Your nutritional plan will play a significant role in reaching your goal. Have adequate calories and get enough protein, carbs, and healthy fats. A registered dietitian can help you develop a personalized plan. Number four, lift heavy. Your weight workouts should be challenging. To get bigger and stronger, do low reps and high weights. To get toned and build endurance, do high reps with low weights. Pick a weight rep combination that's intense enough to be considered a vigorous workout and with minimal rest intervals. Cardio and weight training each have their share of benefits, and including them both in your workout plan has been proven to be just as beneficial, if not more. But we all need to begin somewhere, right? To start it easy, click here to know what are the simplest cardio exercises you can do to lose weight fast.